Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to be adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. So before we get started, I have a quick warm up for you guys. Um, so go ahead and pause the video and give these a try. And whenever you're ready, hit play to check your answers. All right, so go ahead and check. Uh, for part A, you can factor um, using difference of two squares. Uh, for part B, there's, uh, there's two steps you need. First, there's a GCF of two. Uh, make sure you don't lose that two. And then that remaining trinomial can be factored using magic X. Um, so you get two times X minus four squared. Uh, for part C, um, since that A value is greater than one, we need to use that grouping method. So remember, you multiply your a and c terms and you say what multiplies to make 12 and adds to make 8 6 and 2 and so we're essentially splitting up 8x into 6x plus 2x and notice i put 6x next to 3x squared because they have something in common um, so then you simply factor out the common factor of 3x um, from the first two terms and then from the second two i have a common factor of 2 and when you do that, you'll notice that you end up with the same factor, x plus 2, which means you can group the coefficients into the second factor. And part D is not factorable because there is no such thing as sum of two perfect squares. There is difference of two squares, but there's no such thing as sum of two squares. And again, if any of these methods, um, you feel a little bit rusty on them, please go back and watch the old videos because... Factoring is not something that's going to go away. We're going to use it all year, and you'll need it next year and um, in any math class that you take in the future. Okay, so we do have quite a bit of vocabulary for today. A lot of this vocabulary might be already familiar to you, so um, I'll kind of breeze through it. Um, so we are talking about polynomials today, but before we do that, there's some specific types of polynomials that have special names. So a monomial is an expression with a single term like 12 or 5x cubed or 9xyz. So notice that there can be multiple variables. It can just be a number, um, but there cannot be any um, addition or subtraction, so single terms. A binomial is an expression with two terms like these. So again, two terms separated by a sum or difference. And a trinomial is an expression with three terms. Um, a polynomial is an umbrella term. It's an expression um, that with more than one term. So a binomial is a type of polynomial, so is a trinomial. Um, so it covers um, anything with more than one term. And it's essentially a sum or difference of monomials like this. Um, so these next couple pieces of vocabulary, we're going to use them a lot this unit. Um, so make sure you understand what these mean. So the degree of a monomial um, is the sum of the exponents of the variables within that um, monomial. So for example, if you have 12x squared y to the fifth, you add up all the exponents you see, and that's the degree of this monomial. So this monomial is a degree of 7. So if you are asked to find the degree of an entire polynomial, you're essentially looking for the term that has the highest degree, and that will be the degree of the entire polynomial. So this term has a degree of 1, this term has a degree of 3, and this has a degree of 2. So we say the degree is 3. So you always pick the highest degree for any individual monomial. Uh, the leading coefficient will be the coefficient of the term with the largest degree. Now, I do want to point out that the leading coefficient is not always in the front of your polynomial um, because sometimes our polynomials aren't written in descending order. Um, so you do need to find, again, where the largest degree is. So if you look at these two terms, this has a degree of 2, 1 plus 1. This has a degree of 3. So this is our largest degree. So the coefficient would be the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient is 12. And last, um, standard form is when the degrees of your terms are in descending order. So this is typically how we like to write our answers. So notice here the degree goes from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. So this is how we'll try to write all of our answers. All right, so let's start by adding polynomials. 
Um, so when we're adding polynomials, um, like you see in example one, we're essentially just going to be combining like terms. So with addition, those parentheses don't really affect um, how we do this problem. So again, we're looking for terms that are the same. So um, in the second polynomial here, you can see that we're going to be adding um, x to the fourth. Some people like to actually line them up underneath the, the like terms. So we've lined that one up underneath. And then we have, I see an x squared term. So I'm going to put negative 8x squared underneath my other x squared term. And then I see an x cubed term. So I don't see an x cubed term here. So it's actually just going to stay the same. And then here we're just going to be combining like terms. So here if we have 6x squared minus 8x squared, it gives us negative 2x squared. Remember when we're adding... Um, or subtracting, only the coefficient is going to change. Um, this term stays the same. The 6 stays the same. Here we have 8 plus 1, so that gives us 9x to the 4th. And then we still have that 5x cubed. Um, so now we've combined uh, like terms. Now we just want to make sure to write our answer in standard form, so descending order. So our largest degree term should go first. So we have 9x to the 4th plus 5x cubed, and then we have minus 2x squared minus x plus 6. And we're all done. Okay, let's try one more together. Um, so here, again, we have a polynomial plus a polynomial. Uh, maybe instead of writing them underneath each other, some people like to color code or circle terms that are the same. Um, so if that helps, you can do that. So I'll start color coding. I see that I have two x terms. I see that I have two x squared terms. I see that I have two constants, which are terms without um, variables. And then this is the only x cubed term. So we'll start with the largest term first. So 6x cubed, sorry, the largest degree first. And then let's look at our x squared term. So here I have 3 and then minus 7, so that gives us negative 4x squared. If that helps, you might want to cross off the terms as you use them. Um, and then here I have 12x minus 8x, so that gives us 4x. And then we have negative 14 plus 4, which is negative 10. So whatever works best for you in terms of um, keeping your terms organized, um, that's what you should do. So there's no right or wrong way to keep your work organized. All right, so now we're going to be subtracting polynomials. Um, so when you're subtracting two polynomials, you do need to be careful um, because you need to remember that this minus sign is affecting every single term in this polynomial. So we're actually subtracting every single term. So to approach these problems, I actually like to distribute this negative to every single term in the second polynomial and rewrite the problem. So we have 4x cubed plus 11 minus 2x plus 3x squared. So that negative doesn't affect the first one, but it affects every term after. So this becomes um, minus 15. Here, if we're subtracting negative 5x, it's like adding 5x. Here, the negative turns this term negative, so minus 3x cubed, then the negative times the negative, this becomes addition, so plus 7x squared. So that's the step that I recommend that you take. And then from here, we're simply um, combining like terms. Um, so let's start with our largest degree. Let's do our x cubed terms. Uh, so we have 4x cubed minus 3x cubed gives us 1x cubed. And then our x squared terms, we have 3x squared uh, plus 7x squared, so that's 10x squared. And then here we have negative 2x plus 5x, which is 3x. And then last, our constants, we have 11 minus 15, which is negative 4. And there you have it. All right, let's try one more together. So again, we need to be really careful that 
we distribute that negative to all of the terms in your second polynomial. So it becomes minus 5x squared minus 3x cubed plus x plus 3. So again, I really recommend that you just rewrite the problem or at least rewrite the second polynomial. And then here we just start combining like terms. So we have a single x cubed term, so that's going to stay the same, negative 3x cubed. Uh, here we have negative 2x squared and negative 5x squared, which gives us negative 7x squared, like this. Uh, 5x here and 1x here gives us 6x, like this, and then 8 plus 3 is 11. All right, uh, so go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try on your own, and then we'll check your answers in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check your work. Um, so here you can combine 6x squared and, and 1x squared to get 7x squared, and here you could also combine 3x and negative 7x to give you negative 4x. Um, these other three terms stay the same, and make sure your answer is in stand standard form, so uh, the degree should be in descending order. All right, here I have another you try, um, so please pause the video and give it a try, and when you're ready, hit play to check your answer. All right, so go ahead and check. Um, remember, whenever we're subtracting, I really recommend that you rewrite the problem um, to reflect that every single term has been subtracted. So it's negative here, positive three, positive two x squared, and negative eight x. And then from here, it's just a matter of combining like terms, making sure your answer is in standard form. All right, so before we start multiplying um, polynomials, I wanna do a quick review on just how to multiply terms with exponents. So um, here we have two monomials being multiplied. So anytime you're multiplying terms with exponents, um, you're simply going to be adding up the powers for the bases that are the same. So here I have x to the power of m and x to the power of n. They both have base of x. So all we need to do is simply add up the exponents. It would just be m plus n, whatever those two numbers or values are. And then here I have y to the power of p and y to the power of q. Since they have the same base, we're simply going to add up the exponents. So y to the power of p plus q. So there's your quick little review on how to multiply terms with exponents. All right, so let's practice that real quick. We're going to multiply two monomials together. Uh, so whenever you're multiplying two monomials, you can always start by multiplying the coefficients. Those multiply just like any two other numbers. So 12 times 3 is 36. And then here we have base um, that's the same for x. So we're going to add up the exponents. Here's 3. This has an exponent of 1. So this has, uh, it ends up being x to the power of 4. 3 plus 1 is 4. Okay, let's look at the second example. Let's start with the coefficients. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. And now we can do our x terms. So here we have 2 plus 5 is 7, so it's going to be our x um, exponent. And then for y, I have y to the 4th times y to the power of 1. So add those up, and we get y to the power of 5. And then for base z, we have 1 plus 2, which is 3. And there you go. Okay, so now that we can multiply individual monomials, now we can uh, multiply polynomials. So there's a lot of different ways that you probably know how to organize a problem like this. Um, maybe you simply just do some type of FOIL. I recommend anytime you have a trinomial or larger, I like to use this method called the box method. It's just a way to keep your work organized because we are going to have a lot of terms in the way. Um, so you set up a box like this. So since it's a two by three um, that you're multiplying, where you have two uh, rows and three columns, or it could be the other way around. And so we're going to take the two terms from our binomial and we're going to put them along the side. So here we have 2x and we have negative 6. 
And then we could take the terms from our trinomial and we'll put them along the top. So 3x squared, positive 4x, and negative 2. And then in each box, you simply um, follow to see which two uh, terms you're going to be multiplying, and you put the product in the box. So here we're doing 2x times 3x uh, squared, which is 6x cubed. And then here you have 2x times 4x, which is going to be 8x squared. Remember, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then here you do negative 2 times 2x, so negative 4x. And then in the second row, negative uh, 6 times 3x squared, so negative 18x squared. And then here, negative 24x. And then here, positive 12. So there's your intermediate steps. And then from here, you just need to look for terms that can be combined. So I see that I have x squared terms here, x terms here. Um, so those I just need to combine. So let's start with our largest degree. So we have 6x cubed. If you combine these two terms, that gives us negative 10x squared. And then we have negative 28x and then plus 12. So again, using this box method just helps to keep all of your work organized and it makes it really easy to combine like terms. All right, let's try another one together. Um, so here, again, we have a binomial times a trinomial. So we can set up a two by three. Maybe this time I'll set it up like this. Just to show you, it doesn't matter which way uh, you set up the dimensions of your box. So a tip for you guys is when you have a term uh, or a polynomial like this that is not in descending order, when you write it here, I recommend to write it in descending order. So I'll actually write negative x first and then positive 5 seconds. So remember this negative always sticks to the term after the x. And then same thing here. I'll start with my largest degree term, which is negative 4x cubed and then 2x squared and then positive 7. So rewriting it in this order is not mandatory for multiplying. It will just make your work a little bit easier um, in completing this problem. So again, each box tells you exactly what to multiply. So here we have a negative times a negative, so it gives us positive 4x to the fourth. Add up the exponents, 3 plus 1. Here we have negative 20x cubed. And the next row, this gives us negative 2x cubed, and then 10x squared, and then here in this last row, negative 7x, and then positive 35. And now we just need to combine like terms. So these two terms can be combined, but everything else um, is unique. So we'll start with our largest degree. So we have 4x to the fourth, and if you combine these two terms, it gives us negative 22x cubed. And then we have plus 10x squared minus 7x plus 35. So again, if you like to organize your work in a different way, go ahead. Um, I do just recommend taking the extra time. Um, to do some sort of setup because it will really help you avoid small mistakes, which are really easy to make with these types of problems. Okay, so now we're going to try a trinomial times a trinomial. So here's really where I recommend that you use some type of organizational method like the box method because you are going to need to keep track of a lot of terms. Okay. So we set up a 3 by 3 and we can place either trinomial on the top or side. So I'll put that first one on the top. So we have positive 3x squared, then negative 5x, and then positive 1. I'll put that second one along the side. So negative x squared, 2x, and negative 4. Now we're just going to start multiplying. So in our first row, this gives us negative 3x to the 4th. Then we have a positive 5x cubed, and then negative x squared. In the second row, we have 6, and then we have x cubed, uh, negative 10, x squared, and then positive 2x. And in our third row, this gives us negative 12x squared. This gives us positive 20x, 
and then here we have negative 4. So one cool thing about the box method, um, if you have the same uh, types of terms for the first, second, and third, makes combining like terms really easy because here's all of your x cubed terms, here's all of your x squared terms, and here's all of your x terms. So now we just need to combine like terms. So our highest degree term is negative 3x to the fourth. Here for our x cubed, we have 6 plus 5, which is positive 11. Uh, for your x squared terms, we have negative 12, negative 10, and negative 1. So this gives us negative 23x squared. Uh, for your x terms, we have 20 plus 2, which is 22x. And then we just have that minus 4. All right, let's try uh, one more together. So here we have 2x squared plus 6x minus 3 squared. So this one um, I threw in here because a really common mistake that people make is they try to distribute exponents as you would distribute maybe a coefficient out front. So you cannot simply distribute exponents. That's not how it works. Whenever you see something like this where you have a polynomial squared, it means that you are multiplying that polynomial by itself. So here's what it means. So you need to make sure that you are actually multiplying it out completely. So again, for this one, I will use that box method because it is a trinomial times a trinomial. So I'll put one along the top and then one along the side. And then we simply multiply. So here we have 4x to the 4th, 12x cubed, and negative 6x squared. And here we have 12x cubed, 36x uh, squared, and negative 18x. And last, negative 6x squared, negative 18x, and then positive 9. And then all we have to do from here is combine like terms. And that leaves us with 4x to the 4th plus 24x cubed plus 24x squared minus 36x plus 9. So again, just make sure anytime you see a polynomial squared that you understand you're multiplying the polynomial by itself. You cannot simply distribute exponents. That's not how exponents work. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and try one on your own. Um, we can check your answer for this in just a few seconds. All right, go ahead and check your work. Um, so notice here when I did my box method setup, I did write this second polynomial in um, descending order just to make my work a little bit easier um, down the road. But again, that's not required to do, um, but it does help with the organization. Um, you might have noticed after you multiplied out your terms that your x squared terms actually cancel out. So your final answer should not have any x squared terms. All right, here is the last example from uh, today's video. So again, pause the video and give it a try on your own and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, go ahead and check your work. Um, so again, with these types of problems, I really, really recommend that uh, use the box method or something similar to keep your work organized. I really do find when people try to start multiplying in their head or combining like terms in their head, that's when small mistakes are made, which are uh, much more avoidable if you take the time to show your work. All right, um, so that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.